And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. It's time, Bunny! It is time. It is indeed time. Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time yet again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to shimmy, shimmy, ya, shimmy, ya, shimmy, yay our way into the second half of our podcast and any episode of a podcast where you get to talk about uh, Peter Boners is going to be good. Yeah. Period. So, um, period. The second half of our podcast is where we're going into now. Yeah. And it is said second half, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all new extra strength now in an environmentally safe, non biodegradable container. Movie of the week. And this week, we are kicking off the brand new year with a wonderful film, one of my absolutely favorite films of 2022, the A24 Kids film. Marcel the Shell with Shoes on. Thank you, Eleanor, for helping me out there. I've got my six-year-old here. She saw the movie with me. Maxwell, my 11-year-old, didn't like it. No? He, walked, he, he walked out of the room after about 20 minutes. Eleanor sat with me and watched the whole thing because it was adorable. Marcel the Shell with Shoes on that you didn't like. I'm fine with that. I'm not upset about it, but you are grounded. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. It's a wonderful movie. It is a shame that this wasn't a hit at the box office because I would have loved for A24 to go balls out with kids content. Yeah. If I close my eyes and really think hard, I can picture Hereditary Jr., yeah. You know, the new show on Nicola on Nick Jr. It's Hereditary Jr. It's all about a magical decapitated head that teaches kids Mandarin. Mm -hmm. Boom. There you go. Um another Midsomar. Midsomar babies. We we just throw in a talking dog. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, Denny. Oh, I am the. You know what I hate? Can you stop repeating everything I say? You're driving me nuts here, okay? You've been doing it for so long. I have held back on snapping, but. I'm sorry for snapping at you like that. So sorry. Ah, oh, I I'm sorry that I just snapped. I just snapped. Yes, you did. So, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, Midsummer Babies, um, the lighthouse, but it's all about the seagulls and their friend a mermaid. Yes. Open that. Can you open what? No, that's my toy. Yeah, no, I'm keeping that. Lamb is already almost a kid's movie. Mm -hmm. I can see an adorable animated film about a half lamb, half human getting into wacky adventures. I can already see that. Yeah. I can see it perfectly. An animated, it, it's, it, it'll be like a bizarre Swedish Stuart Little. Yes. I'm down with that. I am so down to clown with a uh, lamb, a uh, lamb for kids. Stop covering up the camera, Eleanor. Okay. Let's talk 2020. I try and make a list of my favorite movies of the year every year. I made one for 2021, but I never posted it online because reasons. But uh, my favorite movies of 2022, I did share that list. And Marcel the Shell is proudly my number two favorite film of the year. I think that it could have been number one on any year that everything, everywhere, all at once didn't come out. Yes. But 
everything everywhere all at once came out and so uh there went the chances of marcel the shell no i have seen other people's lists uh i i it, there is a hashtag film twitter out there there's a black twitter and there's a film twitter and um film twitter people love posting their movie reviews and uh and all of that and I have seen a lot of other people's lists of their favorite movies of 2022 and their worst movies of 2022. And a few times, a couple of times, I saw people on Twitter with Marcel the Shell with shoes on as one of their worst movies of 2022. One of their worst? Yes. <laughs> but um, I'm just going to come out and say it. If you hated Marcel the Shell with shoes on, either A, you have no kids, or B, you have kids, you don't spend enough time with them. No. Uh, because this is adorable. I want to hug this movie. It, there's something that parents do here in the Midwest. I never saw this in California. I never saw this in Arizona. I see it here in the Midwest all the time. Where... The kids are like, hey, can you take me to this park? Sure. Get in the car. I'll drive you to the park. Now go out and play. I'm staying in the truck. Okay. Listening to, I don't know, talk radio. And you see like, you know, four different cars with four different parents just sitting in the truck while I'm balls up in that playground. Yeah playing with these kids, chasing them around and stuff like that. That is something that parents don't often do. I am. I try to be very hands-on with you kids. But not that's not something that other parents do. So I think that those parents are the parents that hated Marcel the show with shoes on. Uh, Eleanor. So uh, we're here with Eleanor. Eleanor, can you tell us, uh, first off, let's start by, uh, what's your name? Eleanor. Oh, so your name is Eleanor. Okay, thank you, Eleanor. We had no idea. Uh, how old are you? Six. You're sick? Oh, no, it's probably COVID. Six. Six. Okay, you are six. What number is after six? Seven. Okay, you didn't have to scream it. Everyone's deaf now. Good job, Eleanor. Everyone is deaf on Twitch and wherever you get your podcasts. So uh, this week's movie is Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. What were your thoughts on it? What, what did you think about the movie? It was great. I just loved it. Good, 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 good. Uh, what were your favorite parts? <clears throat> when they had it, the interview? Oh, with 60 Minutes. We just call it the show. Yeah. That's how popular it is. We just call it the show. Bunny, what were your thoughts on this film? Definitely, definitely adorable. It's adorable. And I think a lot of it is is on the voice actor. You said her name a couple of times. I Jenny think she Slate. was she was great and really breathed life into the character. Because the character itself, like Yeah, it's kind of cute. You know? But there's not really much to it. Yeah. It's a shell with an eye. It's got shoes and then a mouth. <laughs> you know? And I think that that she really brings the adorableness to the character. Why do you want the microphone? Because. Because why? Because why? Because. Okay, I'm holding the microphone, okay? I'm holding the microphone. Okay. Something important. Uh, 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 okay, the microphone just got unplugged. Hold on. Uh, 
You can hear me. Okay, good. Uh, yes, Maxwell, what do you have to say that's super important? The time is 420. Max. It's 320 here, but he does have a point. He does have a point. He does have a point. He, he's he's pretty smart. Uh, buddy, why don't you hit Marking us with it the... up. Marking it up for you. Nice. Why don't you uh why don't you hit us with the plot of this week's film? There's a shell. And the shell is living with this guy. Uh and the shell has <coughs> The shell has a grandmother, and there was an accident, and his his whole family of shells, his community of shells, got like washed away or something. Yeah, I, at, at first I thought the grandmother's name was Manicotti, but it's not. The grandmother's name is Connie, and Marcel calls her. Nana, Connie, but when Marcel oh. says that, it runs into one word, and it sounds like na na Nanacotti, which I think is a pasta? Well, Manicotti is a pasta. Manicotti. Manicotti, yeah. But, That's what I think it sounds like. Yeah, it definitely sounds like a pasta. <clears throat> so then this guy that he's living with starts doing a documentary about him, and it becomes a big internet sensation. Uh, and because of that, Marcel gets to be on 60 Minutes. Uh, with Leslie Stahl. With Leslie Stahl. Um, and then, like, spoilers, you know? Yeah. I know. I know that when you put your uh, red squishy doll in the camera and take it out that everything gets green for a second orange yeah okay yes you want to do it okay this is a science experiment this is also a podcast which is a, a verbal medium and you're doing a visual jokes which people will not entirely get you're ruining the camera now everything's all <laughs> it looks like in a hollywood movie when they make it mexico okay now we're normal okay there you go don't do that anymore no no don't do that anymore. You're going to give it that orange Mexico glow. Stop. I don't want to be fighting you during this podcast. Okay, so let's do some stats. This is a 2022 A24 movie for kids. And if that doesn't excite you, then check your freaking pulse. It is based on a series of YouTube videos that began in 2010 and became a bit of a cool, hip, trending, viral sensation for a while. The videos were created by a director named Dean Fleischer Camp and his then wife, actress Jenny Slate, a wonderful comedian and actress who was at one point in time on SNL until she said the uh, F word live on the air and they fired her. OK, uh, but since then, she's become quite an actress and uh, she's she she did some wonderful uh, drunk histories back when that was still a thing and she's become quite an accomplished voice actress the person who voices marcel the shell voices the little white dog from the secret life of pets eleanor you know the little white dog get the gum in your mouth please such a six-year-old move you know the little doggy the little <coughs> white doggy the girl doggy from secret life of pets yeah, that's the same person who voices Marcel, the shell with shoes on. Marcel, the shell with shoes on. Yeah. Uh, she was also in Everything Everywhere All at Once. Was she? Yes, she she was uh, the woman with the big nose who used a dog uh, as a kung fu weapon. Okay. That was Marcel, the shell with shoes on. So this was a big year for Jenny Slate. So they both created the the original Marcel the Shell with Shoes on YouTube videos. Then they got big and they started branching out. They did a 
a kids book and that became successful so i believe they did a series of kids books and then in 2014 they announced that they were working on a full length feature film for marcel the shell with shoes on then in 2016 the two broke up they got divorced but like the professionals they were they continued on with the film and thank wood they did Despite not being a massive hit at the box office, it is up for an Oscar for Best Animated Feature. They actually had to fight to get included as an animated feature. So now Who'd they, have they to fight? are... Huh? Who'd they have to fight? I don't know. But, well... AJ it... Styles. AJ Styles. Nice. Uh, the phenomenal AJ Styles. The, uh... Uh, I have no freaking idea what I was what I was about to say. Oh, it, the Oscar people were worried that because it is like a live action slash stop motion animation film, they were they weren't sure if it should be included in best animated in the best animated category for the Oscars. So they Eleanor keeps messing with the screen and I'm just trying to focus on the words. So that this can be a fun visual thing for whoever's watching and then whoever's listening to it. I can I'm I care about you list podcast listeners. Unlike I, Eleanor I, I, here. I, I could I could accidentally, you know, click on a different screen or something and you could beat her brutally and then we'll just come back. No, no. Uh but now, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On is up for Best Animated Film, and it is the first stop-motion slash live-action hybrid film to ever be nominated for an Oscar. And this is big news. This is recent. The director, Dean Fleischer Camp, apparently a lot of studios really liked what he did with Marcel the Shell with Shoes On because he has now been tapped to direct a live-action Lilo and Stitch film for Disney. Nice. I've never been the biggest fan of Lilo and Stitch. No. Oh. But I will watch a Lilo and Stitch done by the Marcel with the shell with shoes on guy. I am 100% down with that. I hate the live-action Disneys, but I am down with that. If they're going to make Lilo and Stitch, I think that there's hope for a live action Three Caballeros. <laughs> live action. Just get yeah. an American sailor who doesn't wear pants and has a speech impediment, and he goes out drinking and tries to bang uh, Mexican women with a Brazilian guy who smokes all the time and a Mexican bandit who randomly shoots at people. And they do some like serious hardcore mexican drugs and they start seeing things that's the entire movie and they dance a lot live action <coughs> three caballeros make it happen disney listen to the fans <coughs> you know what's pissing me off in hollywood right now they hired james gunn to head the DC Cinematic Universe and try and actually make sense of it for once. Yeah. And the DC fans are all pissed off. And you know why they're pissed off? Because they successfully bullied a studio to make the Snyder Cut happen. And now they think that they can just decide what happens to the DC Cinematic Universe from here on out. Yeah. Well, can you imagine that if Marvel did that? If Marvel was like, oh, we're not going to do any more Ant Man's. They didn't like the first one. Like, we never would have gotten Thor Ragnarok. No. If, if the fans had been listened to, it's just ridiculous. All the DC fans think that they can now bully uh, Warner Brothers into firing James Gunn. I'm I I actually find myself being a little bit excited about the DC Cinematic Universe. Uh, I kind of I kind of Brothers... find it ballsy as hell that he just like axed everybody. Yeah, I think it's I think <coughs> it's freaking awesome that the guy who made Brightburn 
now has control over future Superman movies. Yes. That is freaking awesome. I love that. Oh, and let me go while I'm let me go into a slight rant here. Marcel the Shell with Shoes On premiered in 2021 at the Telluride Film Festival, but was not released into theaters until March of 2020. But that just because it premiered at a film festival that hardly anyone went to in 2021 doesn't mean that this is a 2021 film, Wikipedia! This isn't a 2021 film. This is a 2021 film for rich Telluride studio executives, but for normal Americans, this is a 2022 film. Yes. It's for all the losers. Hey, my show, the show with shoes on. This is for you. Did you just put a uh, squishy doll's butt <laughs> in the camera? You did. That is exactly what you did. Okay. Honestly, Wait, any movie that features Peter Boners from the Bob Newhart show as the maestro, how can you hate that? Yes. The maestro. No, I, I and it's like, what, like... Like he's one of the guys. Like, like it's not that I've been wondering where you've been. It's like I forgot that you existed at all. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm glad pretty you're working much. again, but like, wow. <laughs> yeah. It, there's only one. There's only one criticism I have of the film Marcel the Shell with shoes on. And I hate to bring it up, but I'm going to bring it up. Uh, I wouldn't even consider this a spoiler alert, but I just don't like it when films do this where. Uh, Hello, my name is title character. I'm young and I'm a little bit shy, but I think that. If I try really hard, that by the end of this film, I will be happy. Anyway, it's just me and my insanely old, fragile, and close-to-death grandmother, whom yes. I'm sure will live forever and in no way be killed later to give me some drama. Yes. Come on, fragile grandmother. <clears throat> Let's go play outside, fragile grandmother. And it's like, okay, the first, like, ten minutes of the film, Oh, you know someone's dying. Yeah. You just know it. And, and it's like, oh, okay, that's not exciting. See, but besides that, like looking past that, I love this movie. It's easy breezy fun. I will never pronounce uh, uh, Whale Jetski's name correct ever again. It's an adorable film. Not a lot of people saw this. People should see this. It is cute. And it's something that like I watched with my six-year-old and my 17-year-old and they both freaking loved it good this is a wonderful film and i i think it's so adorable and uh, i think more people should watch it. it this is like my uh how it ends yeah because it's like this is a great movie that no one saw yeah and people should go out and watch Marcel the Show with Shoes On. It's adorable. You are really messing with this camera. It's not my camera, okay? This is your mother's camera that I am using. Now you've made it once again to look like Mexico in a ho in a Hollywood movie. Stop putting your squishy animal's butt on the camera, okay? Please, stop. I'm almost done, all right? So just stop putting a squishy butt on the camera, okay, Eleanor? I know how much you love squishy butts, but I will say that you're a squishy animal. Shakes a lot, which makes it real easy to twerk. See? Jiggle, 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 twerk, 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 twerk. It's very realistic butt jiggling. Which one should I do? I don't know, but I'm not going to help you pick what games to play on your tablet because I'm trying to do a podcast here. Okay? This is difficult. So that's all I've got for this week's movie. It's freaking wonderful. You should watch it.
Go watch a movie. Yes, you should. This is a fun movie. Our next episode is going to be on January 22nd because we're we're doing it every other week, and that really helps with my uh, mental health. Uh, this movie was an A24 film, and it was a, 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 a it's a PG rated film. It's good for for the whole family, and it's adorable, and I love it. So next week we are going to Crazy Town. All right. This is a co-film. This is a film that was co-created between uh, two of uh, the most powerful uh, artistic uh, places on the planet. France and Minnesota. Okay. Finally, these two powerhouses of cinema have joined together to create a really astounding masterpiece. And Bunny, let me just say, this movie is available for free on YouTube. I'll shoot you a link. Um, it's also on archive.org. It's available to stream in a few places. This is absolutely bizarre. Do yourself a favor. Do not look it up before you watch it, okay? Okay. Do yourself a favor. This will be better if you know nothing about this film. You haven't read a review. You haven't heard a heads up. This is the bizarre 1983 horror film mindfuck simply known as Blood Beat. I don't think I could even explain what it's about. No. Okay. But... Right here. Let me tell you, this is uh, batshit crazy, and you are going to love it. Okay? okay. You are going to absolutely love this film. Uh, it, it's free on YouTube. I, I, I've got it on my Watch Later playlist. I'll send it to you right after we finish this. Ooh. This is going to be fun to talk about and break down a 1983 French Minnesotan supernatural horror mindfuck is is what this is and <laughs> so excited to do this we're going to be doing some weird stuff like this this one is good some of the other ones are just absolutely flat out bad i found another film by the born into mafia guy uh oh i found a i found a film done entirely by strippers called Killer Rack. I'm wondering if it's in any way related to uh, uh, what, what Chesty Morgan. Oh. Uh, probably not. I've got some real, I've got some really bizarre films and we're going to be watching them throughout the, the year of 2023. 2023 we're going to go to some strange places and we're starting off in our next episode with the 1983 horror film blood beat feel free to search it on youtube audience if you want to watch along with us and you really do this is a trip uh <laughs> it's best with a little bit of weed it, it is best with a little bit we, of, it's we best could with live weed. stream it that is a possibility i that is a pretty good possibility we'll think about that we'll think about that you should you should watch it first and see what you think Okay. This is freaking weird. I can't wait to do Ten that. Minute but that warning. is but that is our next episode. Episode <coughs> 447. Wow. Uh our next episode will be episode number 447, which means that we've done 446 episodes to get to this exact point. Don't try and check yourself because you don't have enough time to see if we have done 440 six episodes before getting to episode 447 just take our word for it why would we lie that would be so weird anywho uh that's our next episode now that i'm looking back at this episode the highs and the lows uh lilo and stitch mona lisa saperstein jose feliciano um british bigots morbius i gotta say i think this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast this has been a damn good episode. 
Okay, good. I, I felt the same way, but I wasn't sure because I feel like you're the one who sort of makes that distinction and not me. And the last thing that I want to do is step on anybody's toes. But yes, I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend May Lynn, and on behalf of Eleanor and Max and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you douche waffles and poopy toes. And you shell. Nice, nice. Way to tie it in. You really tied the whole room together. Eleanor? <laughs> What? What? <laughs> what? What? Marcel? <laughs> Marcel? Is that what you're saying? Like Why are you saying it like that? Okay, sure. That, that'll be that'll be the the last bit of dialogue. Do 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 do. You're not Ric Flair. Stop it. <laughs> Skitty Papa Doo Wow, cut and print. We are cookie. Yes, you need to stop yelling into this, Axel Rose. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Cut and print.